So, <clears throat> before we take the, the cartridges out, you know, to, to stitch it and to uh, add some fasteners here, I'm just going to flip it over. I'm just going to hit the back with a burnishing tool. Okay. Just to, uh, you yeah. know, Make sure that we got full contact. All right, so to stay with the uh, theme, the yellow boy, just got a brass receiver. Uh, we're going to go with uh, brass. Fasteners. Look at this. We're not gonna cheap out. Yeah, that's really it. We're not gonna we're not gonna go, I shouldn't say cheap out, because it's not necessarily cheap, it's just a different way of doing it. We're not gonna um go with just your basic fasteners. We're gonna take this to a much higher level. Solid made in the USA brass fasteners all right put the baggie aside we got the four that we need we've got two two female and two male so we're going to grab a measurement thickness using our uh, handy dandy gauge call it a caliper Calipers were on your car. It's not. All right. So basically, the width here is about 0.31. All right, but we want to pull it in. So if we pull it in, we're getting to about 25. That's what we want to do. Quarter of an inch. So the total length, the overall length. These two pieces together needs to be a quarter of an inch. So let's take a look and see what we got here. All right, this piece is 43, so it's got to be smaller than that. All right, so we're going to shave the, the the male side down first, and then we'll match it up with the female side. All right, so this needs to be 0.25, so right to there. So we'll call it, it doesn't have to be exact, it could be a, a skosh, longer or shorter. So I'm going to just go by eye here, using a Lyman's plier. Um, uh, Just came back from the belt sander, and you can see we uh, all right. Here we are. Get a final measurement on that. Two seven. Perfect. All right. All right. So basically, what we're going to do now is just taper these. All right. I got you over here at the belt sander. We're just going to clean up, like I said, the uh, just taper this a little bit, like it was from the factory. Well, I hope you enjoyed our travels. All right, so we've got our, our parts here. Let me just sweep this area here real quick. I like all this dust. Okay. All right, so we have our, our components. Our modified 
components, okay. Brass, sort of a brass rivet. You know what? Before I put this in, I'm gonna I'm just gonna clean up this edge. Just, just I'm not saying it's bird, but uh, I like stuff that's smooth. Yeah, I'm gonna clean that up. Be right so back. I've uh, got that. I've got the nail end of the brass uh, fastener rivet. Okay, I've got a piece of 400 here. I just want to round over this edge. Now, what's cool about these rivets is they are the same diameter, but they fit right into the Dremel light tool. Okay, so make for real easy work. piece put behind the rivet all right so we've got the custom-made brass fasteners rivets stays whatever you want to call them see the back put them in place now what we have to do to finish up this piece is to stitch and we're going to stitch this. We're going to stitch the zone for 100 years. 100 years plus on this as far as uh, usability. Uh, the client out in Kentucky is going to be able to pass this down to his great, 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 great grandchildren. Great, 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 great. Grandchildren, five, five generations, yeah, about a hundred years. Okay, so uh, again, going back to our punch tool, we are going to punch. Use this punch to create. Okay, here you go. So we got our holes punched. Be able to uh, stitch this with muslin. This will literally, between everything, never come off. Okay, so we got our thread, stitching needle, and we're going to go ahead and finish this up. No doubt that hand stitching is very time consuming, um, but honestly, there's really no way to get quality results like we we do without stitching by hand. Um, you know, so very time consuming, but it comes out really, really nice. So.
we are just going to hit that with a little bit more Bic more. This is a Bic 4 leather conditioner. It conditions, cleans, polishes, and protects. Okay, so I mean, what's better than that? All right, so we're going to hit it a little bit. Rub that in. You can never use too much Bix or Bickford. Bix, Bickford, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Call it whatever you want to call it. I call it Bix. Okay. I'm going to hit the loops a little bit, hit in between the loops. You always want to condition your leather. You want to use a good quality product like Bic. Bicmore. That's the one with the horse on it. Easy to remember. Will not darken leather. Finish leather. That's important too. You want to use a neutral, neutral color. Unless you want to darken it. I don't know. Maybe you want to darken it. Alright, so that's that. Alright, so, uh, see how she looks with the cartridges in there. Okay. Uh, should I burnish the edges? Eh, I think I will. Burnishing simple. Just hit it with a little bit of beeswax. It's quality, 100%. American bees. All right, this 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 here. This. Hang on a second. This is beeswax, yellow beeswax bars, natural, earth friendly, healthy. You know, uh, like I said, USA, Chesterfield, Missouri. Good stuff. This is what we use exclusively on our leather products. No, we're not getting paid by them to say that. I'm just telling you like it is. Here's a brand new bar. These bars last a long time. This is probably like, I don't know, six months old, this one. Yeah, let's use a new bar. So anyway, you just hit the edges. Little beeswax. Okay, like so. Really can't use too much. So don't worry about that. Hit the edges like like so. You know, I'm not gonna burn the edges. Don't think that's necessary. I'm just gonna burnish them. Okay, so so we're just we're just gonna hit gonna hit the edges. Okay. I don't know if I did this side. I can't remember now. I think I did. We'll just hit the, the edges a little bit like that. Okay. Burnishing is basically um, applying some heat to the edge. Okay, so here's a burnishing tool. You get different thicknesses of leather, so you get different grooves here if you will okay so this is about right eh, this one so you just you just rub this on there like like so you can see that's actually darkening the edge a little bit it's called burnishing basically you're taking you're taking the uh, the heat from the friction you're melting the beeswax and at the same time you're bringing up the natural oils in the leather. Okay, so, I mean, you can burnish this until the cows come home. You know, you, I don't think you can over burnish this. It just depends on how you how dark you want the, uh, the leather. You know, do you want the edge really dark? You know, like you'll see on some holsters. I'll give you an idea. Let me get, well... This, this, this little tool case, I burnished the edge really, really hard, you can say. You know, it's like the two pieces like look like one. That's how much is burnished. But this is dark leather. I don't want to 
burnish this leather too much because it's light. I don't want to, um, you know, if the owner of this product wants to darken the edges a little bit more, they can just by hitting it with a little beeswax, like I said. Yeah, hang on a second. I'll Here's show you a piece example. of leather. I'll show you an example. Okay, different types of leathers burnish differently. They darken at different rates and so on and so forth. It depends on what type of leather it is. But anyway, here's a piece of leather. I'll give you an idea of how this works. So right down the center. Okay. And to burnish it, you just use some, any type of you know, burnishing tool. You could use wood. You could use a scrap piece of leather and rub it on there. You know, it depends on what you're going for, you know. Um, I'm just going to use this, this piece of wood. And you just rub it. And you see that's starting to darken. Okay, that. It's starting to darken because the, the raised pieces of my mat on the meat. See that? You can speed up the process as well by hitting it with a heat gun. This will make it go real fast. Right? That's not burning it, it's burnishing it. And you can see how quickly a lot of people, if they want to like antique, so called antique an item, will, will burnish it like this, you know. Here's a, here's a perfect example, too. Here's a piece of leather on here. So if you work on an edge, you want to make it look like it's old or aged. Rub the beeswax on there. Hit it with the burnishing stick. You can even hit it with some heat. And look at that. Instantly, it looks, you know, 100 years old. Okay, so we're at the point now that we need to make the lace for this. Okay, the lace we want to match with the theme, with the color theme. All right, so we don't buy lace, we make our own lace, okay? Especially since, uh, you know, we always do projects like this where it's one-off stuff, you're not gonna be able to match a piece of lace to this. Especially, I mean, maybe the color, maybe, you'll get close to shade, but you'll never get the texture of the grain the same. All right, so we always use, when we make lace, we always use the same piece, okay? So making lace is simple. Uh, very simple. We have a lace cutter. Um, it's a basic tool, you know. You just run it along the edge here, and it cuts a piece of lace. But we never use it because you know what? Honestly, um, by the time I end up finding it, oh, what do you mean finding it? It's right here. Look at that. It's right in my kit, my leather kit. See what I'm talking about? But I never even hardly ever take it out of there because I, I, I just I like to, whenever possible, you know, cut you know, by eye, and uh, I've done so many of them that, um, you know, I never had any issues, but anyway, what I want to tell you about laces is, is that, generally speaking, you need double the amount of length as the, 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 the piece that you're working on, okay, so think about this as seven inches, this is seven, so that's 14 Double that, so 28. So you're going to want to have 28 inches of lace, okay, All right, to make sure that you have enough, all right? You never want to, if you're cutting your own lace, run short. I mean, you know, if you run short, you know, what am I going to do with this lace, this small piece? I have to wait until a project comes up. It might be you know, five years from now. But anyway, so anyway, so you're better off having 35 inches instead of having, you know, uh, 27 inches or you're an inch short, you know, and then you're pulling your hair out if you have any Anyway, here we go. We got this uh, We let's just check the measurements on this. This is 7 14 28 All right um, With these type of rigs I like to have a little Hang on a second. These type of rigs. I like to have a little extra Extra lace. Eh? So if the uh, if the, the the owner wants to get creative, you know, and uh, have something that's uh, you know real cool, like my uh, my carbine, my Winchester carbine, model ninety four. Put a cheek riser on this one, cheek rest, I should say. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so. Have a little extra material. Maybe you want to wrap it, like I did here. I don't know. I think this looks cool. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. 
don't know. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah. That's good stuff right there. Imagine that. Imagine that on there. Wow, that's hot. Alright, so uh yeah, I got this because this is uh you only put four rounds on this because yeah. I don't know. That's what I decided to put on that one. Anyway, uh so my point is with the lace. I'm going to uh, add some additional. So when I ship this out to uh, my friend in uh, Kentucky, he can decide whether he wants to just you know, tie it together down here without wrapping it. Or maybe he doesn't even want this. I don't know. I think it looks good, but he can do whatever he wants to do. It's not my rifle. All right, so I'm going to leave extra. So this is like an extra you know, 10 inches here and then an extra, say... 3, 3, 3 times 4, 12, 10, 12, figure another 2 feet, alright, so I'm really going to do double the lace for this, for this, uh, for this project. Alright, so <clears throat> with that said, we have the piece that we're going to make the lace out of. 12, just to make sure he's got enough. We're gonna give him. Uh, gonna give him. Uh, four feet should be way more than enough. So we're gonna go four feet on that. Okay. So now, when you start getting towards the end, to continue this, you're gonna obviously go on a curve. Okay. You're gonna round the corner and continue. And you're going to end up cutting off some of this this excess thickness here later. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so got our piece now. We'll just clean up the corners so we made the turns. Is lace is we just bunch it up in the bowl. We take some Bickford. You can use any type of leather conditioner. Basically, just massage that in. Squeeze it in like a ball. Like that, okay? And then we uh, basically got some lace here. Alright, so. Alright, you can see here that we got a beautiful piece of lace. I'd say it's about definitely at least four feet long. So, here we got four. Four runs here. You see here, two loops, four runs. Make that obvious. One piece, okay. This is a yardstick, so, you know, it's longer than a yardstick, so, probably about four and a half feet. Alrighty. There you go. There you have it. Okay, with with the um, the uh, rifle butt uh, the buttstock cover with the buttstock cover um, we have also included uh, a piece of extra piece of lace so if the owner wants to embellish the loop okay the saddle loop the saddle ring loop 66 or other Winchester rifle, he can certainly do that. Okay, so we've uh, included a match to the other lace and uh, all the other uh, leather we've that also we utilized. included a lever action wrap in a matching color as well. Okay, or in the you know the same the same leather. So we've included that kit as well. Okay, so that's a complete kit. And so you can uh, you can see we have that on R66, okay, just a uh, lighter shade. Um, I'm sure with a match set, everything matching, it's going to look absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible, I'm sure. All right, so there you have it. All right.
The only thing left to do with this is to test fit it. Okay, so we, here we are. We're test fitting this on our 66. What the owner's gonna want to do, but let's just wrap it once. It's up to them. To wrap it, not wrap it. Looks great either way. We just put one wrap on it. See what it looks like. Yeah, let's loosen that up. We didn't, we didn't tighten this down completely here. You know, what I normally recommend, you can see some of these laces are a little loose because this is just a test fit. I like to pull these together nice and tight and really pull on them and work them, you know, to get everything really, really tight. But this is about 80% of what I would do as far as tightness, tautness. Um, yeah, 